you try to start the engine in your machine at the beginning of your work shift, and when you turn the key on, nothing happens. One common trouble spot, especially on older machines, is the battery disconnect. Komatsu and other manufacturers use them in their older machines that don't have an emissions package using diesel exhaust fluid. There are different looking battery disconnects, but in reality there are only two types. One type disconnects the battery from the machine ground, and the other disconnects the positive lead between the batteries and the starter. Both switches have four terminals. The two big terminals are for the battery leads. The two small terminals are connected to a holding coil inside the switch. This one small terminal is labeled BR, while the other small terminal is labeled R. Voltage is made available to the BR terminal, and the R terminal is connected to ground, either through the key switch or regulated through a computer. The coil pulls in and holds a copper plate against the connecting plates to the battery leads to complete the circuit. The system can be checked quickly with a test light by turning on the key and then using a test light at the BR terminal on the disconnect switch. If there is voltage at that point, the problem is usually associated with the switch itself, the ground wiring, or the computer if the machine has one. If there is no voltage to the BR terminal, the fuse panel in the cab should be checked. Old machines have all the fuses powered all the time, while newer machines only power up two fuses. On the negative type switch on the left, the negative wire from the battery connects to one of the big terminals on the switch, and the other big terminal has a copper strap that connects to the mounting bolt that mounts the switch to the frame of the machine. The positive type switch on the right has insulators installed on the body of the switch that isolate the switch from machine ground. Both switches are operated the same way. We can test the switches themselves with an ohmmeter. I have removed the bolts holding the cover on the negative switch to show the operating mechanism. This switch has some electronic components that appear to be diodes. I'm testing different places inside the switch for continuity, but the primary test is between the small external terminals. Note that the ohmmeter doesn't change when the test leads are reversed. The reason this switch was changed was that it did not close when the key was turned on. The ohmmeter shows there is no continuity through the coil. I'll check the positive type switch the same way with an ohmmeter. I'm looking at the plastic isolators first to make sure they are intact. Checking the small terminals, I see that there is continuity and it is the same in both directions. When I remove the cover, I see the corrosion and burn marks on the inside of the switch. Looking close, we can see the melted copper on the switch plates. The contact plate is free to move. In checking for continuity through the coil, we see little resistance. There is a diode connected between the terminals, and it is heavily corroded, but I'll try and check it anyway. I see that the diode is faulty when I get the same reading when I reverse the probes of the ohmmeter. The inside of the case shows a lot of corrosion for moisture. The failure of this switch was that it would stay closed when the key was turned off. Because this system leaves some of or all of the fuse box circuits energized when the battery switch is turned off, I have recommended a manual master switch be installed on all older machines that aren't used for long periods of time. This eliminates the possibility of stray grounds draining the batteries. Understanding how these switches work should make solving key switch issues easier to troubleshoot and repair in the future. Thank you for watching.